At this point, it's also worth reviewing a concept from chapter one, uh, and that is Amdahl's Law. So Amdahl, Amdahl's Law talks about some limitations uh, of speed up uh, in the context of a parallel system. So let's define some quantities here. So T sub S is the amount of time that it takes to run uh, some instructions or a program in serial uh, or sequentially. T sub P is the amount of time that it takes to run uh, those instructions or that program in parallel. Uh, and P is going to be the number of parallel stages. So uh, how many things can be in flight at the same time. So the speed up then is going to be the serial time divided by the parallel time. Uh, and if you think about this, uh, this quantity should increase as we increase uh, the number of parallel stages. So more things are executing in parallel, which hopefully means that the parallel time is going to get smaller and smaller, running faster relative to the serial time, and so this overall quantity is going to get larger and larger. So let's define R as being the percentage percentage of logic that is not amenable to pipelining. So this is the portion of execution that will not decrease as we add more parallel stages. Um, or uh, in the context of um, running more than one program at the same time, so how many, uh, uh, how many programs can we run at the same time. But in this context, we're talking about running multiple stages at the same time. So basically what Amdahl's law says is that R places some very fundamental limits on the speed up. So there is this fundamental limitation that involves the quantity S and the quantity R. Uh, and in order to see that, uh, we have to do a little bit of math, uh, and I'm not going to dive into the details too much, but um, essentially this uh, is um, uh, an equation for the parallel time that models the parallel time based on this equation R. So this is the amount of uh, the program that can be parallelized. This is the amount of the program that can't be parallelized. Uh, and so the, the observation is that if we think about this, uh, we can do a little bit of rearrangement here and we can plug this formula into the speed up. Uh, and so we get a formula for speed up that looks like this. Um, and if you uh, think about this a little bit, this term will eventually uh, go to zero in the limit. Um, so if you've uh, studied calculus, you know that. Um, but again, the details aren't terribly important. What's important is that if you do work all this out mathematically, uh, what you'll find is that you'll essentially have this term disappear, this term will cancel with this term, and you're left with an equation that looks like this. And this is Amdahl's law, essentially, which is that S is less than one over R as P increases. So as we increase the amount of parallelism in the system, the speed up is going to be limited inversely with the amount of the logic that's not amenable to pipelining. And that should make intuitive sense. The more of your program is inherently sequential, the less benefit you're going to get by parallelizing it. Uh, and you can look at this uh, graphically with uh, this. Um, so this is a graph from Wikipedia. And it basically uh, shows sort of the theoretical results for various values of R. So this is uh, the parallel portion. So this is kind of 1 minus R. Um, so if half of the program can't be parallelized, meaning the other half can, then Amdahl's law says that our theoretical speed up is limited by one over 50% or two. So the maximum speed up is 2x, which means that the best we can do is improve our program um, by 2x. If, on the other hand, we can manipulate it, uh, or if we have a problem that is amenable to parallelization, such that 90% of it is parallel, uh, and only 10% of it is inherently serial, then Amdahl's law tells us that our theoretical limit uh, is going to be 10x, which is much greater, uh, and we'll get uh, better a, a better theoretical speed up from it. So it's, it's interesting thinking about that in this context, um, and it uh, provides uh, some insight into limitations that one might have uh, in the context of parallelization uh, when uh, not everything is parallelizable, um, which, which will never be the case. Everything, uh, you'll, you'll never have uh, something that is 100% parallelizable.